Hi everyone, in this screencast I wanted to show you how I created a looping style animation effect in Storyline 360, but this should also work in other versions of Storyline. Um, I was working on a project recently and it was about fire safety and I wanted to create an effect like you can see on screen whereby the, the flame kind of looked like it was flickering. And the way I've done that in the past is with a whole lot of change of state triggers and, ha and have the image alternate between two slightly different versions in, in two different states. Uh, but the problem with that is, is eventually the state change of state triggers will run out. Um, so I was watching a, a video the other day by Alexander Salas, uh, or Style Learn, you might know him as, is in, on Twitter and LinkedIn. And it was about creating incremental numbers using variables, but I was actually able to use part of what he showed in that demo and apply it to this situation to create this effect that will just keep going and going and going. And what I found really clever about it was that it actually uses objects that are off the slide and we're still triggering off them. Because to create this effect here, um, I've only used five triggers. So let's check it out and see how we do it. So I'm going to close the preview down and I've got another slide here where it's set up already. So I have my little flame picture and what what um, we actually need to do is we're going to put some objects off the slide uh, uh, that are on motion paths and we're going to create a looping effect with them and then trigger off, off the motion paths. So uh, I'm simply going to insert a rectangle shape doesn't really matter what shape. Now I'll put it on the slide to start with so we can see it in action and but then I'll move them off the slide. So onto that I'm going to add a line motion path okay and just have it sitting there on the slide like that. Might even move that up a little bit and I've got a trigger on that that I get when I add the motion path to move when the timeline starts which is what I want. Um, then I'm going to insert a second shape now I could I could have copied, but I'm just going to insert a second sh rectangle shape, and I'm also going to put a motion path on it. Okay. Now with the second rectangle, you can see it's also going to move when the timeline starts. But I'm going to double click on my trigger here, and I'm going to move the second rectangle on its motion path when an animation completes, and it's when the line motion path on the first rectangle completes. So the first object will move on its motion path, then when it's finished, the second rectangle will move on this its motion path. Then to create the loop, I'm going to add another trigger to move my first rectangle again on its motion path when an animation completes, and this time it's going to be when the animation, which is line motion path 2, completes on the second rectangle, thereby creating my loop. So the first move will be from the first rectangle, then the second will move, and then this new trigger will then move the first rectangle again when the rec uh, motion path on the second is finished, and it'll just go round and around. Now, a couple of things I want to do at this point is with my motion paths, they're still set to the two second um, time frame. So I'm going to bring that down to just a quarter of a second. That'd be something that you could play with. And a quarter of a second for both. So if we have a quick preview at this stage, we can just see the, the objects moving. They'll move fairly quickly, um, but you'll see them just, they'll continually go on their motion paths over and over and over again. See, they're going over and over and over. Okay, so I'm going to move both of those off the, to the side here. So they won't even be on the slide, but even though they're off to off stage, as as people call it, we can still they they they'll still be moving on those motion paths. And now we can add out, um, we can add another couple of triggers to get the flame to look like it's flickering. Now the first thing I'm going to do with my flame picture is I'm just going to come to the states tab, and I've got a normal state, but I'm going to create a new state, and I'm just going to call it flicker and add it. Now it'll create a, a, a copy of the normal, but for my flicker state, I'm just going to shrink the picture down a little bit, reposition it so it's kind of in the middle there. And so I've got two versions, I can say done. So I, I have the two versions. So now all I need to do is just some change of state triggers. So the first one is change the state of my flame picture 
to the state of flicker. And I'm going to do that when an animation completes. And it's going to be my line motion path on rectangle one. So it will get a bit smaller. Then I need a second one that's going to change it back to normal, change the state of that flame picture back to normal when the animation completes on my second rectangle. So now it's going to alternate between the two. When this one, when the first motion path finishes, it will get smaller. When the second motion path, it gets bigger. And because these shapes are effectively on a loop, the picture is going to get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller, thereby creating that flicker type effect. So let's take a look. And there it is over and over and over again. So what I really thought was really neat about um, Alex's tip and trick was that um, we can trigger off objects that are not even on the slide um, to create these kind of continuous animations um, that you could use in your projects. In this case it worked well for me in this particular project but I'm sure there are other applications where you want to have something somehow animated constantly on a slide. Um, so yeah, so that's it for this screencast, creating a looping animation with just five triggers in Storyline.